Lori, before we get things kicked off here, mm -hmm. will you tell me if folks want to find this recipe mm -hmm. and all of its steps, where can they go? To find well, they can go to earthfair.com. They can read all about our food philosophy. And then yeah. if they click on the link for the blog, which is the vine located at the top of the page, mm -hmm. we have this recipe along with many others there. Awesome. OK, yes. thank you for that resource. Mm -hmm. um, well, let's go ahead and get things started. What's sure. the first thing we need to do? Well, I absolutely love butternut squash. It's such a great item to cook with in the kitchen. So mm -hmm. we have a twice baked butternut squash recipe. Right. So we took a butternut squash and mm -hmm. we cut the stem off and we cut it in half lengthwise like you see here. Now okay. just take a small spoon and scoop out all of the seeds so you have a nice hollow shell mm -hmm. and then you are going to drizzle it or dab it with a little bit of oil. Now you can absolutely use extra virgin olive oil however we're working with something a little different this evening. This is grapeseed oil. Have you ever used grapeseed oil before? I have not. I'm not a very mm -hmm. versatile <laughs> chef but enlighten me. What are the benefits of that? Well with grapeseed oil it has vitamin E for one and also it has a bit of a milder flavor versus the extra virgin olive oil so it's not going to interfere or compete with the other flavors of the other ingredients in the dish. Okay. Again extra virgin olive oil will work mm -hmm. or you can use your grapeseed. Okay. Now once you get your oil nice and coated onto your squash you're going to take a little bit of nutmeg. I love using nutmeg. It's one of my favorite flavors of the fall. Very aromatic too. Yes, I love it that. is. And once it bakes, those flavors are really going to soak into the squash. Um, mm -hmm. And at this point, we're going to put it in the oven and bake at 450 for about 30 to 40 minutes until mm -hmm. your squash is nice and tender and golden brown around the edges. Mm -hmm. And when it's done, it's going to look something like this. Great. Now, this is where we're going to take a spoon, or I like to use a scoop here. Okay. And we are going to create a nice hollow shell because we're actually going to make a mixture to go inside of our squash shell. Hence the twice baked. There you go. All right. So you're going to take a spoon and be very gentle with this. Um, you don't want to break your squash. The goal here is to get as close into the shell as possible without actually ripping the squash or poking through the bottom. Okay. So you want to try to get as deep as possible. And with squash, there's tons of health benefits here. You're getting beta carotene, vitamin C, and really the combinations of those two nutrients is going to help build up your immune system system, which is great, especially this time of year with the cold and flu season going around. Sure. And Lori, how would you describe the flavor of butternut squash? It has a bit of a nuttier flavor, um, but it's not very strong, which is nice. So you okay. can add in a lot of different ingredients. It's very versatile. Okay. So see how I got real close down in here to the shell, but I didn't poke all the way through. This mm -hmm. is something on what you want to have. And notice okay. how we're not throwing away the squash meat. We're actually putting it into a bowl. Mm -hmm. It's going to go into our mixture. Perfect. All right. You All ready right. to start the mixture? I am. All so right. Start me off. So first we have a little bit of ricotta cheese. We're okay. adding that directly into the bowl and we're using about six to eight ounces of fresh ricotta. Now after we add in our ricotta, we have some goat cheese. Now have you ever had goat cheese before? Um, I have. I love it. It's kind of salty sweetness. Mm -hmm. I feel like it goes with almost anything. Yes, and again, it has a very mild flavor, so it meshes with the with the squash very nicely. And the great thing about the cheese that we're using tonight, everything is from Earth Fair, so it's free of added hormones and antibiotics. You're getting a nice natural cheese, a clean tasting cheese. I love ethical cheese. Yes. Nothing better. <laughs> yes. Now, after we add in our fresh ricotta and our goat cheese, we're going to add in a couple tablespoons of fresh sage. I love working with sage. Yeah. The, very aromatic. Yes, too, very yeah. aromatic, and the flavors are amazing. Now, after our sage, we have some fresh thyme. Okay. Now, I always, always say there's really that one or two ingredients that really pull all of the flavors together, mm -hmm. and our fresh herbs definitely is going to do that for okay. us here. Uh -huh. Now, last but not least, we have about a pound and a half of all-natural sausage. Now, we're working with an all-natural breakfast sausage. You okay. can use a mild Italian sausage, or do you mm -hmm. like turkey sausage at I, all? I really like ground turkey yep. sausage. Again, so. very versatile, so you can pretty much use any kind of sausage that you have available. Again, there's no added hormones or antibiotics. Okay. Now, see how we have our mixture here? It's coming together very well. I'm getting my arm workout yes. today. <laughs> yes, you are. Now, at this point in time, I think we're about ready to add back into our squash shell. All right. Now, if you hold the bowl, I'll take the spoon here, sure. and it can get a little messy, no worries. Now, we are going to add this into our shell, Okay. and this is great for kids to help in the kitchen, and this particular dish is great for parties. It's gorgeous, especially if you're having folks over. It's great for a hearty appetizer or even as an entree. Now, notice how I'm mounding the ingredients right on top of the shell there. Are you kind of lightly pressing it? Again? Yeah, just lightly okay. press. You don't want to pack it in too tight, mm -hmm. um, so just kind of lightly, lightly press it in. 
like you see here. Now right before we put it back into the oven for about 10 to 15 minutes, we're gonna sprinkle with some mozzarella cheese. This is my favorite part. And you can obviously garnish with a little bit of sage and thyme uh, right before you serve. Okay. And when it's done, we actually have a final product. It's gonna look something like this. That Again, is beautiful. it's gorgeous, it's great for entertaining. And the best part is it's super simple to make. Virtually anyone can put this together, only a few simple ingredients. Simple and straightforward, yet very impressive. Thank you. It's a final display. It's well, a great dish. Lori, thank you so much for showing me how to create this dish, and I look forward to you helping me mm -hmm. with my seasonal craft yes. uh, project. <laughs> We are going to kick things off with a fresh arrangement made from botanicals that I scavenged from my workplace, Moore Farms Botanic Garden. Um, I just wanted to mention that we have a really exciting uh, event that's free and it's for children of all ages this coming Saturday called Botanical. And the theme is Enchanted Woodland and it's going to be really special. It's from three to six at Moore Farms and go to moorefarmsbg.com to check out more details. And I hope to see you and your little ones there. Uh, so for now, I wanted to showcase, Lori, some of mm -hmm. the beautiful things we have at the farm. So if mm -hmm. you would, Vanna White, the live arrangement for <laughs> me. Um, so basically, this features a lot of greenery, things mm -hmm. like Nandina we were talking mm -hmm. about earlier. Which are these right here? Exactly. They're um, beautiful. They have an awesome kind of russet green berry that sort of changes color and mm -hmm. turns deep red. Mm -hmm. um, and then also has fabulous foliage here. So that's mm -hmm. kind of a two for one. Nice pop of green. Exactly. And it kind of fans out and gives like mm -hmm. a luxurious look. Eucalyptus also does the same. I, I mean, love that. It's an aroma. It's very soothing. We also have Hypericum right next to the Nandina. Um, and earlier in the season, the plant has sort of mm -hmm. another favorite of mine. Mm -hmm. um, also, I wanted to feature, of course, mums, chrysanthemums. Mm -hmm. Everyone right. sees those this time of year. Yes. And some of the tail end um, summer florals mm -hmm. uh, you'll see on here mm -hmm. uh, this purple coxcomb, mm -hmm. that really cool spiky flower, mm -hmm. is gorgeous. So okay. that's one that I just kind of whipped up earlier before the program. Right. But what I'd like to make with you is mm -hmm. a dried arrangement. I would love to do that. I'm actually entertaining in just a couple of weeks, and I was looking for something to put as the centerpiece on my table so I am yeah. so excited to learn how to do this. Well this is perfect especially this time of year it's autumnal mm -hmm. and it's virtually free if you scavenge things from your garden. That's great. All you have to do is find a pumpkin. Okay. So perfect. Um, the way that I like to build these is first I'll show the infrastructure. So as you can see I basically mm -hmm. hacked a hole in the top. Right. Um, and then I'll kind of show viewers here. I uh, scooped out all the guts okay. of course. Not the most fun part. Maybe <laughs> it is the most fun part to some but uh, get your hands dirty. Okay. And then what I like to do is put a little plastic liner. Okay, inside, I see that. And it kind of separates the flesh of mm -hmm. the pumpkin from your floral Sure. Foam. Now do you keep the top or do you discard it? Or You can keep the top if mm -hmm. you want and kind of perch it as part of your arrangement. Nice. Some folks okay. Do that. It's very, very creative. Mm -hmm. um, but I actually like to just go for the big open okay. vessel like that. So what we're going to do and just jump right. right in to help me is we are going to stuff uh, magnolia leaves first. Okay. They have a wonderful texture. Mm -hmm. These, of course, are not uh, naturally hued. Right. I went ahead and went a little crazy with some gold spray paint. Okay. These are very thick and they're very sturdy, so it seems like they wouldn't break or Absolutely. they're not as brittle. They're great as a foundation, but you can use other greenery, um, mm -hmm. especially after our unfortunate hurricane that brushed right. past us in the PD. We've got plenty of foliage on the ground. We sure do. So this maybe, is gorgeous. Maybe that's a silver lining. Um, I like doing kind of like thicker textures textured mm -hmm. foundation foliage first right and then you can add the more fine grass okay and very like good that. that makes sense and how far down should we put it into the uh, the film there just about an inch or so um, just so that it feels like it's not going to okay out. just so it's anchored down exactly Perfect. we're just trying to make sure this is secure and doesn't fall apart in grandma's lap right so. <laughs> want to keep it intact uh, exactly so you have a beautiful mm -hmm. um, selection of grasses yes here. Um, basically those are just handfuls of miscanthus okay uh, grass head some people call them zebra grass mm -hmm. um, but you can just stuff them in kind of rustic and almost random. fan them out on the, exactly. the outer parameter here. And These are gorgeous. And there's no right or wrong. Botanicals mm -hmm. kind of speak for themselves, so you just stuff them in and right, it, right. it always ends up pretty lovely. Um, if you want to, since you're mm -hmm. Miss Native American, Sacagawea, if you'd yes. like to add a feather to I our... I saw that. <laughs> I, I definitely want to add a feather in here. I think that's fitting. That is that's from, gorgeous. That's from one of the peacocks who mm -hmm. graciously donated that. Wow. And I like how they're at different levels. You have the short in the front exactly. and, and the medium size and the taller. It's all about balance and leveling out. Exactly. I love having variety and levels, like you say. Right. It's visually interesting. 
Um, also in front of you, Laura, you've got some gold uh, sprays, yes. twigs. I love the architecture of twigs. Mm -hmm. This is from a prunus tree that was slightly damaged, but you can't even tell. Right, absolutely. Do a little pruning. Is this the same spray paint as on the leaves there? Um, this is actually a rose gold paint, okay. which is very on trend right sure. now. Sure. So I'm a fan of that. Um, and you can just kind of tuck them in for some vertical height. Okay. Now, of course, I always have to whip out some cotton bowls. I love those. They're gorgeous, Thank especially you. for Halloween. I, I, something about the cotton balls that goes with the theme. <laughs> Perfectly in season. Here yes. I'll give you some. Um, so we grow these um, out at Moore Farms mm -hmm. under regulation from Clemson Extension, our okay. friends out there. Um, I also really appreciate just mm -hmm. the naked little husk of cotton. Sure. Um, of course, the fiber is pretty fine mm -hmm. too. Right. So you can use either. They're a great addition. Form. Would you put these more towards the front or? I say let's do that. I think that's okay. great to kind of. So they poke them. out a little bit. Exactly. The great part about dried arrangements is, of course, you don't need to water them and they won't stagnate quite right. as fast. So I've made one, Lori, very similar to mm -hmm. this, and um, it's been on my table for about three weeks now. Wow, that's amazing. That's a really long time. Now, can you put these outside or are they more for indoors? I would tend to keep them indoors. Okay. I think if you put them outside, it's best to put them on a trivet okay. um, to prevent the bottom from rotting. Sure, sure. Great idea. Or anything like that. That's gorgeous. Um, yes. So if you would kindly move that aside. One last quick thing I wanted to show viewers is if you don't want to cut into a pumpkin and you want to keep things kind of clean and simple you can utilize succulent cuttings. I love succulents. Isn't that They're great? so simple to take care of. This is literally like a two-step process. Mm -hmm. You can buy adhesive moss okay. in sheets okay. and um, you know it's ethically harvested mm -hmm. so don't go scraping it off of a rock somewhere. Right, please. right. Um, but you can just place it right on top of your pumpkin. No cutting oh, wow. required. No cutting. Nope. That's great. And then I just take this little tack glue, okay. dab it on mm -hmm. and then stick your succulent on. That's super simple and look super how gorgeous easy. that is and that would look perfect on a table. Exactly. Lori, thank you for sharing your expertise on healthy mm -hmm. and seasonal food. Absolutely. And I'm very proud of our tablescape that we've put together yes. with our powers combined. It looks gorgeous <laughs> and make sure to check out earthfair.com to get this complete recipe. Just click on our blog called The Vine located at the top of the page. We have this recipe and many more. Perfect. All right. Will do. Um, Amanda, we'll send it back to you.